up, it's a wee natter. I'm Mark Steele, and across the table from me is... Jenny Steele. And we are joining you on a week where I got a phone call out of the blue. Ooh. It uh, was the BBC asking if we were available to do something called Match of the Day. Oh, yes, yeah. I assume it's a documentary about the best ways to light candles. Yeah, I thought that as well. Yeah. And the important point is it must be really desperate if they get in touch with us. Well, you know? I, I turned them down. I just didn't have time to fit them in. <laughs> <laughs> On a more positive note, the post bag has arrived. And last time we asked you what you both love and hate at the same time. Hmm. It's amazing how many things in life you can both love and hate simultaneously. But if you took it out of your life, it would be the end of the world. Yes. It's kind of weird like that. And Matthew Summers being in touch saying healthy living, a good diet and exercise is a brilliant thing, but it is so boring sometimes and hard to stick to for any noticeable benefit. Especially when there's TV and hot cross buns in the world. Oh, it's funny you should mention hot cross buns, isn't it? I must say, my ever-increasing weight is a tribute to that thought. (laughs) Uh, Slap Ups has also been in touch saying the internet as a whole. There's so much to make you smile, but so much to make you cry. Mm. It's so informative, but also so misleading. It's like your your best mate who's also a bit of an idiot sometimes. Yeah. If you've got an ailment, just don't Google it, for God's sake. Oh, indeed, indeed. I do miss the old internet. You know, not... The dial-up noise like it used to be like this. Remember when the internet had to be like this? Try connect at six o'clock in the evening. No chance. <laughs> I better stop that because it's all screechy, it's all noisy. And I, I'm being taken back to a time when I used to, had to sit there doing it over and over till AOL would finally connect. That but, was Joanna Lumley's voice, apparently, you know. You know the one that says, welcome to AOL? That uh, was Joanna Lumley. I did not Ooh. know that. We're learning something about <laughs> 1990s internet in 2020s. We're doing well, aren't we? Uh, but no, I do. I don't miss that bit. I miss all the, you know, under construction banners and colour schemes that you could still see burned into your retinas when you turned your head away from the monitor that was probably pouring radiation at you at the I same time. I used to call him Sherry Trifle. It looks like a Sherry Trifle. If it's gone too garish with the colours, to me, I call it a Sherry Trifle. But that's how the internet looked in the olden yeah. days. It was that or grey. So I think Mrs Hinch might be ahead of the game there. Yeah. <laughs> or behind yeah. the game there. I'm not sure which. Age has also been searched to say, I have to say for me, it's going to concerts or events. I love the build-up, the excitement and the expectation. Then I always find once I get there, I start hating things so much, you know, like the chairs are comfortable or, yeah. or there are no chairs and my legs start to hurt. The food and drink is too expensive or not of good quality. There are too many people, etc, etc. I believe it's having the old age says. What about when one the chair's got the shared handrail? That's awkward, isn't it? Because you want to put your hand on it, but then you think, oh, I wonder if that person's got that wants to put the hand on it. Well, if they've got the hand on the rest, you want to say, shift. I want to put my hand on the rest. That's a bit awkward, isn't it? That shared arm rest. The trick is just to yolo. You only live <laughs> once. Uh, scream Leroy Jenkins and throw your arm out towards the rest and see what happens. <laughs> that would be my advice there. Uh, but you know, he talks about having the old, uh, having the old. I would say it's also being grumpy in my case. You know? Yeah, uh, I went to a gig in Wembley Stadium. It's over a decade ago now, but it was still yeah. in a new Wembley Stadium. That's how that's how long Ooh, ago they, <laughs> Wembley. But anyway, in the nosebleed seats. Oh, to, yeah. We practically needed a telescope to see the TV screen, never mind the stage. Although, on a more positive note, it's where I learned that Cyril Green was in Narve Barkley. I, I didn't associate I, I the didn't. two. No, me either. Not till I saw Chappie on the stage. I went, oh, mm. now you see, you learned something. And on that note, let's have a wee answer. I probably shouldn't tell you this, but we are on a very important mission. I don't want to alarm you, Jenny. But we've only got four weeks to pull this important mission off. Right. Or actually less than that if we want the information to be useful. Hmm. You worry me now. What is it? Yeah. We're on the hunt for the best cross- hot cross bun for 2023. Oh, yes. uh, already had a bit of an upset in uh, week one, yeah. thanks to uh, Co-op and Asda. Yes. This week, we've got two other supermarkets involved in our little hunt to find the best hot cross bun in time for Easter. Yes. Because that's when you stop selling them, isn't it? I think, well, sort of, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm here, I'm here, I'm here. Yeah. Uh, so we got two we got two more contenders the first of which is another mainstream supermarket mm. this time blue and red it's tesco yeah so tell us about the tesco hot cross buns i don't think any hot cross bun is going to be bigger than the ones that the, the co-op because the co-op even though they came last so far they've come last so far they were the biggest bun weren't they these are not too bad 
But again, nothing special about them, nothing special. Mm. I got the plain ones because with Tesco, they had like apple and cinnamon and orange and cranberry. So I thought, I'll tr- we'll stick to plain. And it, they, they've not got a glaze on. They look a little bit, yeah, middle of the road. Quite big bits of fruit I'm seeing. So hopefully they taste better than they look. There's only one way to find yeah. out. Yeah, we have a bit of a nibble? Give I've it, toasted them again, munch. haven't we? Put give a bit of butter on. What are you thinking? That's not bad. Yes, I'm going to go for Tesco at the minute. I think in Tesco over Asda. Oh, okay. So we've got, Tes- we've got a new first co-op. place. I got an upset right at the very mm, start yeah. of week two. That's just insane, that is. So, I, I would love to tell you more about hot cross buns, but literally from Tesco's Bakery, and it just says four hot cross buns on the packet. I've got no more information <laughs> than that. I don't know what that. ingredients are. They've got currants in anyway, so. But for our second contender, mm. we'll need you to do the music, uh, dear listener, because we, can, we can't afford to share the music with you, so we need you to do your best impression of Fleetwood Mac's Albatross. <laughs> We're talking old Fleetwood Mac, not new. It's, it's kind of weird calling it new Fleetwood Mac, considering they're not being... Together for God knows how long now, but <laughs> <laughs> old old Fleetwood Mac. Uh, as we talked to you about a uh, fruited and spiced M&S for luxury mm. fruited hot cross buns. Now M&S won the mince pie competition, didn't they? They did. They yes. did the best. So these ones look totally different from any of them we've had at the moment. So they have got a darker coating and they've got a bit of a glaze going on. They're a bit more... Cr- they're f- I've got to be honest, when I toasted it and when I tried to put the butter on, it did fall apart. Is so that a good or a bad thing? Well, yours has fell apart, Mark. Mine hasn't. Sorry. Well, you better tell us what you think of Let's it. Let's have a look. They've not got as much taste as Tesco. So where are you putting them on your list then? I'm putting them level with the uh, co-op. <laughs> <laughs> They've got to go in some sort of order. They can't share a position. Do you know what? I'm going to go co-op... Oh, sorry, M&S, but M&S, Asda, and Tesco. That is the order from last to first. Mm. Four so far. Yeah. Interestingly upset, the winner of the mince pie hunt is not mm. the winner of the hot cross bun it's hunt. not. Which is outrageous. I was not expecting I was, that. I was, I was not at all, because they really look nice and rich, don't they? But I've not got much flavour, much flavour at all from the M&S one. But when you look at them side by side, there is the currants. Is it a currant or a raisin? I'm not sure the difference. They look a lot more bigger and chunkier in the Tesco, so maybe that's why you're getting more flavour with the Tesco one. And remember, if there is a hot cross bun that you think is too hot to miss, yeah, I'll go get my jacket. But you do need to go get in touch with us, dear listener, because there is only a couple of weeks left on our hunt for the best mm. hot cross bun for 2023. Uh, best way to get in touch, at Solid Radio UK or at Solid Sooty on the socials. It's amazing how the little things are what improve life spectacularly, isn't it? Mm. I've kind of fumbled that, but you get the idea. Get the so idea. It's the little things that make the huge improvements in life, like how a 99p toothbrush can save you thousands of pounds in dental work. Well, that's true. It is true, actually. I was about to say only kidding, but it is genuinely yeah. true. But I came to realisation yesterday that I really should have got a dishwasher years ago. <laughs> you know, the amount I've just saved in marigolds alone is insane. <laughs> so it got me wondering, what simple or household item do you wish you'd purchased earlier? You wish you had it earlier in your life than you got it. Is there anything for you? A food mixer, I think. Because you know when you're making a cake mm-hmm. and it says you've got to like mix it until it's thick and creamy. I never had one, and I used to do it with a fork, so it takes you forever, and then all the butter curdles, all the egg curdles, so you're whipping it away, and it never whoa, comes whoa, out right. Whoa, whoa, whoa. So you're, risk. you're seeing the butter and the egg curdles, because yeah. it takes... How long is it taking you to stir a cake mix? It's, and then you whiz round. And have you ever had it where you whizzed so fast that the bowl spins round, and then all the stuff inside it just whizzes out? I don't think Sonia Derbyshire would ever do that, because she's a brilliant cook, but... If you can imagine the scene, you've got your little mixing bowl and then you're trying your best to whiz it round with your fork because you haven't got a mixer. Mm. And then all of a sudden, it's like your bowl is on like, you know, you've seen the hamsters on the wheels like that. And it goes, and then everything splats out. And you're like, God, Benny. 
So I wish I'd got a little, even if it's just like a handheld one or a little electric one, I wish I'd got an electric mixer. Oh, like that, the little handheld um, drills that you get? Yeah. Where they, nah, maybe they don't, don't have a motor they're on they're them. They're rubbish. Was... I had one of them as well. They're no, they're no good. You might as well use your fork. They're just <laughs> rubbish. <laughs> uh, the, the other one that, came, you know, for me, comes from the kitchen as well. Uh, gave up a while back and bought an air fryer. It is just so much quicker than waiting mm-hmm. for the oven to heat up. You can't fit Christmas dinner in it. Well, unless you want to do an Oliver-themed meal, but they are fantastic. Mm. So I'm going to open up to you, dear listener. What simpler household item do you wish you'd purchased earlier? Because it made just such a big difference to your life. A couple of ways to get in touch, at Solid Radio UK or at Solid City on the socials. If you're listening on Spotify, a little mes- a question has popped up. You can tap on it and stick the answer in there. And we will share your amazing insights and secrets in the next episode. <laughs> I want to apologise up front, and I really am sorry for bringing in up any traumatic memories here, but I do want to touch on a difficult topic. I don't know if I can even say it out loud. All right. I can't wait. Is it embarrassing? Geese. Geese? Geese. You don't like geese? Well, I know you don't like birds. <laughs> <laughs> the feathered type. I don't know. It, it, it's nothing to do with the fact that I, I think they're freaky weird dinosaurs. <laughs> Which is all birds, not not just geese. Uh, but I, and I don't want to get too birds and bees. But where do you think geese come from? Canada. <laughs> Specifically, just, just all geese That's in the it. world come from Canada. Canada. Geese, yeah, they're yeah. the most lethal looking geese. Yeah. Oh, you're talking about Canada geese. geese you're, you're not the talking geese about world. <laughs> you're, you're not saying if I flip all geese over, there'll be like a little boss bit that says "Made in Canada." <laughs> It's so funny. With a little maple flag next <laughs> yeah. to it. No, no. Uh, so not barnacles on a tree. That's not how geese are made then. No. No. Uh, apparently that's what they used to believe in parts of Europe in medieval times. Oh. Yeah, I was just reading about that. Now you know that, mm. so you imagine it's barnacles on trees for geese. What do you think cotton plants were believed to be in parts of Central Asia? Now I'm talking about 11th century here. Little, the little cotton plants, the little buds on them. What did I think they would be? Yeah, what what did they believe them to be? Uh, chickens. Feathered chickens. You, you're right to go with farmyard animals, but it's the wrong animal. They believed them to be tiny little sheep. Yeah, I can see the resemblance there. Yeah, yeah. or umbilical cords, but weirdly, but t- yeah. t- t- tiny little sheep. <laughs> that's what they believe cotton plants to be. And on that note, tune in next week when we take a look at Barry the Bar Pro's musings on where squirrels and beavers come from. <laughs> I can't believe it, but I've got a second thing that I'm worried about. Go on. <laughs> Why do I find it funny when you're worried? Charming. I feel Charming. Sadistic. <laughs> well, it's a sh- sh- Schrodenfreude or whatever the word is. You, you, you get joy out of people's misery. Uh, no, mainly as a Scot, I've got to say it's the word burgled and burglars. Because it's an yeah. awkward one to pronounce, isn't it? <laughs> At least they're not from Glasgow, and it, then we couldn't talk about burglar alarms. <laughs> <laughs> My East Coast answer is it's hard enough to get it out of that. If, if I was Ouija, we'd have no chance. But let's imagine we're going to break into somewhere. Me and you, Jenny, and you, dear listeners, well, we're going to break into something. I know it's not something we normally do, but just imagine it's the only way that we're going to get hold of the ultimate hot cross button. <laughs> And if we've got to test them all, we've got to go burgling. Yeah. You know, that's just that's just the reality of it. What tools do you think we'd need? A hammer, chisel, a, what you call a jemmy, is it? Some um, big, massive pliers that you can <coughs> click the chain off. A bomb. <laughs> <laughs> Where do you think we're getting this hot cross bun from? <laughs> I, I, I was thinking, I wasn't thinking like that. I was thinking things like silenced Tupperware. So that when you can crack it open, slide it in, crack it, mm-hmm. and you're not going to give it away when you give that yeah, as you open true. it, you know. Is there such a thing as a silent Tupperware? If it's not, I'm going to invent it. Mm. Um, that's that's going to be my mission in life. Not Dragon's Den. <laughs> I, I, I'm almost thinking about applying to Dragon's Den just for the fun of it now because of that. Uh, and I'd take dog biscuits just in case as well. Yeah. You know, you, if they've got a guard dog, you can give it the dog biscuits. He'll be distracted. Brilliant. Would you take photo ID with you if you're going to go burgling? No. Well, one chap did it for real in Cambridge recently. It's a very, very sad story when you know all the nuance behind it. But very useful tip for those of, all of us considering the extraction of hot cross buns. 
from their rightful owners. <laughs> Unfortunately, a wee nasty dear listener. I can only apologise. I'm Mark Steele, and across the table from me is Jenny Steele. But I just want to mention one thing before we go. That last topic that you were talking about, mm. your accent. Don't ever go through a drive-through with Mark because it really does get frustrating when he places the order. Because every time, you know, it's got. Sorry, what was that? And if something's, if he's got to say the word eleven, it's not on, is it? It's just like. You always, always have to repeat yourself in the drive throughs that we go through. You've got me wondering what takeaways that we've been ordering at drive... <laughs> you know, going up to McDonald's or whatever. What have I been ordering 11 of? <laughs> I- I'm starting to wonder now, what have I been up to? It just don't work. You just know it's coming as soon as he says it. It's like, even if it's like a latte or something, it's like, sorry, what was that? A latte. I'm sorry, sorry, I, I can't get a latte, one latte. And then it ends up like you're having an argument with a person on the drive through yeah, I just got to the point where I just go, screw it, I'll, I'll make it myself. Just let me in the kitchen. Yeah. <laughs> It'll be quicker. <laughs> uh, on that note, if you've not subscribed to this fine show, dear listener... I what? wish there were. Sutton needs three more people, you know, three more friends, and she's got 1,800 followers. That's so- Sutton the Solid Radio yes. Cat on Facebook yes. you're talking about. But for this fine here oh, yeah, podcast, this one as well, yeah. you never need to go into your podcatcher and hit the subscribe button. Mm, you do. Uh, or if you prefer to have a bit of country music and other bits in there as well, mm. or you like interviews with cats because you're into that sort of thing, yeah. uh, you can choose instead to search for Solid Radio. You find two purple mountains. With a wait, bit of snow on. There is a t- the tiniest bit of snow on the top. Yeah. It's very straight lines of these mountains in the snow. <laughs> It's not the most realistic, but you'll you'll understand what I'm saying when you see the logo. You can subscribe to that instead and you'll get even more content. Whichever one you choose is entirely up to you. But the important bit is you tell everyone in your life that a wee natter is the podcast they want to get into. Yeah. So when you're, uh, you you know, the gas man's turning up to do a meter reading, you go, by the way, mate, make sure that number's smaller than what's written on the meter. Oh, and also a wee natter. Check it out on your podcatcher. (laughs) And on that note, we'll catch you next time. Bye.